Welcome back. This is Lou White. I wanted to talk to you about a vowel, or what vowels are, as opposed to consonants. The tetragrammaton, or four-letter name, is four vowels, and I want to show you what they look like on this little card. See the top four? Yod, He, Ua, He. Now, pay close attention to that third one. Now, we're writing this from, that would be uh, the right to the left, your right to the left. That, see, that's the way Hebrew is written. They have a modern form that they call modern. It's actually an Aramith script. And the name below that has a suffix added to it, the sheen and the ayin. And it, uh, it's sharing the same three letters as the tetragrammaton. And this is used like 6,823 times, almost 7,000 times in the, what, what the Christians call the Old Testament. It's actually, the, the writing is of, uh, starting with Musha and going all the way through to Malachi. 6,823 times. It's the most used word by far, you would just be amazed. Now, <clears throat> there's no other word that even compares to the number of times this, the tetragrammaton of the four vowels is used. Now, people are mispronouncing it all the time because they don't, not, they not only don't know ancient Hebrew, they're studying Hebrew with the modern rules of the Masoretes or the Karate sect, and they're uh, distorting the, the language because they have been mixed with Germanic and French and other languages in the dispersion. But this is something you can study and get clear in your mind. Slow it down and check it out. And then if you want a card or a whole stack of these, you can get them at tourism.net. The article I wrote some time ago, you can get these also at tourism.net for free. These are, uh, this is the real name the transliteration, and uh, is it J-E-S-U-S, or is it Yahusha? It's Nathan Yahu. It's Hallelujah, not Hallelujah. This is a four-page article, and I encourage you to watch End Time Watchmen with, with Brother Matt, and he's got all these, and I'm showing you these in both the Aramith that they brought back from Babel and the original Hebrew. Uh, but Matt explains all these things very, very well. And there's a, a chart on the, front of the, on the front page which shows you the number of times each one's found in the, script, in the scriptures. Well, th this is a, a Greek word. It's called tetragrammaton. This is another article. And you can get these articles all in one place on a disc. Here's the ambassador's disc. And you can, uh, I think they cost, uh, I don't know how much they are, but you, you get a, over a hundred articles like this. They're studies. And uh, let's see, this is a one I wrote called The Tetragrammaton Under Siege, because someone was attacking it saying, that's not his name. His name is Ahia, or Asia, or something. And I, I, I have it all written down in here, what they were claiming. I don't attack people. I, I don't uh, try to belittle them. I try to uh, help explain the research and uh, get past the, the nonsense of uh, silly arrogance. I'm, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm, a, I'm basically an imbecile in my mind. Now this is a blank slate right here. And how we talk, what do you want to fill in here, is important. Let's put this letter up here because the third letter of the name, the third vowel, is, an, is a U. It's the sound of a U. It's never going to be a V. A V is using a sound that has a buzzing sound. It uses the upper teeth in the lower lips, which makes it a consonant. 
see when we read the script the the King James version we see Jehovah it, he's getting a well there the 12 translators were pretty much assuming that the Kerates or the uh, Masoretic vowels were added to distort the sounds to enunciate a different sound they put vowels in between letters the vowels are written down in the Hebrew text now this letter it sounds like a U in hallelujah. It's also used as a connective. It means and, and it can mean or, and there's other connections that it can make between words. It's usually attached to, uh, you know, the beginning of a Hebrew word to mean and, but the uh, letter it looks like this in the ancient script. Now that turned into the Greek, same letter, shaped like this. It's not a capital Y. Like we know, that's not the that's not the letter you're looking at. This is a Greek capital, upsilon. Now, upsilon starts with the letter U. Now, when this letter was adopted into the Latin, it, became, it they dropped this lower stem. See the lower stem right here, and you're left with this other shape, and the Latin uses this shape right here. And you call it a V today, but this was not called a V, nor did it make that sound. It was it was a it was actually a, in, even in the Latin, and the Greek and the Hebrew, this letter is sounded as a U. This letter seen today is being mispronounced. See, even in the 1600s when the King James version came out, and they wrote down the capital ups, the capitalized form of an iota from the Greek, they put a tail on it, and we call it a J, but it was pronounced Y, like y Yugoslavia, this spelled with, spell with a J. It had a Y sound, and because it was a Y, because it came from the iota, which came from the letter Yod, which is the first letter in the name. Well, getting back to this other letter, the mis mysterious letter, I call it an Ua because you see it written Vav all over the world and pronounced Vav. Well, what are you hearing there? I'm going to go through uh, this very carefully and explain this to you. And maybe it'll make sense if you watch this video more than once. The Tetragrammaton, that's a Greek word, two parts. Tetragrammaton, four letters. Tetra means four. There are four vowels. And what is a vowel? This is the core problem, that people don't know what a vowel is. And how are they different from consonants? Well, listen carefully, and I'll explain it to you. This, you can look this up on the internet or in a dictionary. The vowel is a letter that's sounded, that's a written letter, that's sounded without the use of the lips, or the lower lip with the upper teeth, or the closed teeth, like a shh. It, there's nothing like that going on with the vowel. It, there's no hissing, and there's no tongue on the roof of the mouth, like t. There's nothing like that going on with the vowel. There's no guttural stop in the throat, like in the word giggle, g -g giggle, giggle, g -g giggle. That's your tongue, you know, back there and it's making your air stop. Only the shape of the mouth, the cavity of the mouth, is used for a vowel. If we hear buzzing, hissing, clicking, or the tongue stops the air as in the word giggle, you're making the sound of a consonant. And there's no consonants in the name of Yahuwah. Say Yahuwah, Yahuwah. It's not Yehoah. That's a uh, Masoretic vowel distortion so that you wouldn't be uttering the name. They don't like that. Consonants make these sounds, of clicking, hissing, t and uh, tongues hitting the roof of the mouth, and the lips like b, b, or the upper teeth on the lower lip. That's the yeah, buzzing sound. Yeah, buzzing sound. That's not a vowel. 
the the vowels are of the name are yod hey hua hey. When you say hey, there's nothing, no clicking, there buzzing going on. There's no guttural stops. Hey, uh, there's a video I'm going to put another video referenced in the bottom of this thing where I did, I did it like six to eight years ago and it was it's on Torah Institute YouTube channel the V or the V or the Vi any of those sounds those are mixed together with foreign alphabets that happened over the last thousand years maybe even some some less but um, V is not the third letter of the Tetragrammaton. The Latin letter that we see shaped like this, you hear it in the word for sword in Latin. It's gladius, gladius. That's a ooh sound. It's not a V. It, it, it isn't gladius. Or <laughs> it isn't gladius. Or <laughs> it isn't gladius. Or <laughs> I can't even say it. Uh, how would you do that? You know, make it a V. Um, the Greek letters, uh, who was his name? Uh, Clement, he was a circus father, but he wasn't, you know, an imbecile. He was transliterating the name of Yahuwah into the Greek letters, I-A-O-U-E. That is, a, there's a diphthong in there, the dipping of the tongue, and you think you're hearing a W. There's no such thing as a double U in, that's a double, double Vav. That's the two Latin shapes. But a typesetter did that. A typesetter invented the letter double U to condense space and make it easier because otherwise he'd have two pieces of metal type that he'd have to put in place. So the double U is what you're saying. You're saying a double U because you're referring to a Latin letter, which was originally a Greek letter, Upsilon, which was it had a tail, and, and the original letter in Hebrew. Uh, Ebereth is the real word, Hebrew. Uh, not Arameth. Arameth is a, another script. That's what you normally see on the internet where they're teaching you Hebrew, how to pronounce Hebrew. They're showing you Arameth because they brought that back from Babylon when they were in captivity for 70 years. Anyway, Clement of Alexandria was a circus father and he transliterated the name I-A-O-U-E Yahua 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 All vowels. And coincidentally, those happened to be the vowels that you learned as a child in the English, which were Latin letters. I-A-O-U-E A-E-I-O-U same five letters. That's my cat, Happy. Happy. Can you say vow? Anyway, the uh, they transliterated I A O U E to sound the word Yahua, Yah, I A, and then O U E. But Yehovah, or Yeho, that's its own problem. Then the va at the end, that, that can't work because it's not va a vowel that you're hearing. Uh, the Maserets added the yay ho part, the e o thing. The Nakud marks are imaginary inventions from the 8th century. It was around 767, something like that, that the first karate. Anon was had followers that went into this idea that they wanted to do things differently. And some of the things they did were right, but they didn't want anybody saying the name. So they made sure of it by inserting these vowel marks. I call them gnats and skid marks. There's no gnats on you whose name. There might be gnats on my name. But there's no nets on, my, on Yahuwah's name. Take those off. Those are added. There's nothing like that in the Dead Sea Scrolls. 
The vowels of the Eberth language and script are written letters and already express for us how to utter the words. That's why they were written for us. This is written so that a future generation yet to be born might call on the name of Yahuwah. Thanks for watching the vowels, and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.